Hey, what's up everyone? Johnny the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Hackintosh using a uh, budget system. So let's take a look at our hardware that we got going on here. So essentially, what we got is an EP43UD3L motherboard and a 8400GT graphics card. It's a budget graphics card. It's like 30 bucks. Uh, you can find it online like that. Uh, E6500 CPU. It's a dual core CPU, 2.93 gigahertz, and 4 gigs of uh, Corsair XMS memory. There is a 500 gig hard drive here and a 500 watt power supply. This is a Cooler Master Cilio case. It's Cilio case or whatever. It's a silent case. It's got extra padding for silence and um, a standard uh, DVD burner, a SATA DVD burner. And uh, that's pretty much it for the hardware. Uh, one of the caveats before setting this up is that you need to have uh, 4 gigs of RAM. So um, if you have 8 gigs, take out 4. You can put in the rest afterwards. What we're going to be using to set this up today is a boot disk called iBoot right so uh, you can download iBoot from the Tony Mac x86 project and uh, it's an ISO file and you can burn it to a disk a CD uh, one thing I need to show you about this is that uh, this hard drive here has already got an OS on it and I'm gonna unplug it and I'm gonna plug in this extra spare drive this is just for demonstration purposes only and I would suggest that if you also had a Windows drive, um, unplug it. Otherwise, it might get messed up. You don't want that to happen. So let's pop this in. Starts us up. First thing we got to do is change some settings in the BIOS. So I'm pressing delete to enter into the BIOS. All right, so now we're in the BIOS. We're gonna change some settings. Uh, the first screen, you can leave it all alone. Second screen, what you can do is uh, set the drive to none and also floppy three mode support disabled. Halt on no errors. For the hard disk boot priority, you should see your main drive here. It should only be one drive. And then enable the quick boot. Uh, first boot device is the CD-ROM drive. Second is the hard drive. That's pretty standard. Everything else you see here should remain the same. Nothing you really need to change. You could change the initial display first as the PCI Express, but you don't have to right so SATA AHCI mode this is one of the important settings that you got to change by default it should be IDE but you want it to say AHCI everything else can remain the same onboard IDE controller you can disable that and then the USB keyboard function and mouse function enable those you need that because otherwise your uh, keyboard and mouse won't work um, all of this can stay the same except for this HPET mode it needs to be in 64 mode by default it's 32 but we want to change it to 64 so leave it at 64 everything else stays the same we can save the CMOS and reboot all right so sometimes you might have trouble with it booting and you might be stuck on this verifying DMI pull data just restart it and one restart should get it going again so don't flip out if it doesn't work the first time once it's at this screen here what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out the disk And now you're going to put in your Snow Leopard disc. And 
And the important thing is to not touch anything for at least 10 seconds. Wait until that little light stops blinking. Don't press anything and just wait a little bit. All right, so now that it stopped blinking and it stopped accessing the drive, you press F5 on the keyboard. And then now you'll see the OS X disk is picked up and you press enter to select it. Those other icons that you saw, they were just there because the existing hard drive that's plugged in right now has a Windows partition on it. I'm going to wipe it out um, because I'm not going to use it for anything other than Mac OS X. Okay. Now we're at the installation screen. You can choose English as your language. And the first thing we have to do is we have to partition the hard drive that's in there right now and wipe it all out. So go up to utilities at the top, click on disk utility. Once this starts up, this is my main drive that's plugged in here at the top. You're going to click on it. On the drive, not any of the partitions, Just click on the whole drive, click on partition, then under volume scheme, choose one partition, under options, make sure it says GUID partition table, this is for a Mac partition table, click on OK, you can name it, I'll call it main, make sure that it says Mac OS X extended journaled then click on apply. Uh, before you do this, make sure that this is a hard drive that you don't want anymore or you don't have any information on it. That's kind of goes without saying, I think. Okay, so now that it's done formatting, the OS X can now recognize this disk as a, a drive to install uh, the operating system on. So we'll click on continue. Agree. Choose the uh, hard drive that you just formatted now. And this is just something that I personally do. You don't have to do this, but I uncheck the printer support, additional fonts, language translations, and I'll leave X11 and Rosetta on there for legacy support and click on OK and then install. Now it's going through the installation process. We'll come back uh, on the reboot. Um, one important thing is that it's automatically going to reboot and when it does the installation disk is still in there and we have to take out the installation disk and put in the iBoot disk. Uh, during the reboot. So uh, when we come back to that, I'll show you what I mean. All right, so during the installation process, uh, the computer is going to reboot on its own. If the computer screen goes blank for a while, don't be afraid. It's uh, just doing some things in the background with the screen off. And so basically, when you restart, you'll probably be stuck again at this screen right here because it's trying to boot from either the disk or the hard drive and it's not possible. So what you need to do now is put back the iBoot disk, right? So take out the Mac OS X installation disk and put in the iBoot disk. And then give it a restart. Now it's going to boot from the iBoot disk and what it's doing is that it's going to load the drivers uh, for the Mac OS X. So now you see the iBoot disk and now you have the main hard drive that has the Mac OS X install on it. This is the drive that you just installed and set up and formatted and everything. So we'll choose that drive and boot to it.
Okay, so the first thing I need to do is, so I'll do a search for the 10.6.5 combo update. And what that means is that we're going to jump straight from 10.6.0 to 5. And you have to download and install this first. So now I'm going to run the update that I've just downloaded. So click on continue and agree and continue. Authenticate. And now it's important that you download the update and not do the standard software update because that software update doesn't really update it. It reboots the machine and then updates, but you want this to uh, install everything it needs to install uh, before we apply the multi beast. Um, but in the meantime, what you can do is go ahead and do a search for the multi beast program right so I just typed in multi beast and the first thing comes up um, actually it's this right here the multi beast 2.0 and now I'm downloading the multi beast zip file run it and click on continue and here's the instructions as to what to do, but we've already gone through it. Now we're at uh, step six right here. Click on continue again and agree. Click on continue. Now here's the settings that you have to set up. The first thing you got to do is under Easy Beast check that box there that's easiest and for system utilities you can click on both of those right and under advanced options here's where you're going to install all of the drivers that you need for your particular system and uh, if you have different motherboard or different hardware equipment then you'll just have to find the right settings for your particular systems. But here's everything that the disk has to offer. Here under Legacy HDA, here's the ALC888. That's my drivers for the sound. And the rest you can leave alone. So now we'll move on to graphics. And this is uh, running NVIDIA. So under enablers, we need to run the NV enabler. That's it for graphics. So network, I have a Realtek and here's my Realtek choice. And I had the 1000 series, so I'll do the 1000 SL. That should cover it. And for this particular system, that's pretty much it. So one thing about this is that if you try some things and it doesn't work out and you get back into the screen, you do have to check, recheck everything that you uh, checked off you can't just do it once and then go through and try to change things out. You have to recheck all the settings uh, every time you redo this. Otherwise, it'll just uh, wipe out all of your settings and go back to default. All right, so once we finish with that, we click on Continue and Install. You can authenticate now. All right, and now we have ourselves a freshly built Hackintosh. The right resolutions. We can also update. All right, so that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.